Welcome back to the workshop. I, as somebody that's never built anything with a gasoline-powered engine, am trying to build myself a petrol-powered scooter of awesomeness using a lawnmower engine and the most basic parts I can find or make. Thank you for joining me on part two. But what's that? I hear a rumbling in the grinding room. Stop right there! This is serious! Oh, the calamity! It's been a whole two months since we told you about our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I bet you haven't taken down the Demon Lord, crushed the Ice Golem, ascended the Doom Tower. What about fighting? millions of real players in the arena. Well, Raid is sponsoring this episode so you can rest easy and use this as the kick that you need to get back into the game and conquer. Now let's talk about one of the most challenging campaign bosses there are, and that's Fyro, the infamous Fire Knight. He was once a proud knight of Volcar, but committed regicide and was bound by his people to guard Volcar's treasures. But how do you get a hold of these treasures? You defeat him with hits, 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 and more hits. Now my favorite part about Raid is the incredible creativity and design. From the countless places to battle to the incredible weaponry and the awesome bosses, there's endless things to discover in game. Now this month as ever, there is a lot happening. There's a new rotation in the Doom Tower and if you want to get a head start, all you have to do is hit the link in the description down below because new players are going to be getting this epic hero, Chunuru, who's amazing in the Doom Tower, 200,000 silver, one experience boost, one energy refill and one ancient shard so that you can summon an awesome champion in game. And you'll have extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days. First step of the morning is we need an actual axle. <laughs> an axial axle. <laughs> The final dimension I need is 12 millimeters to go into those 12 millimeter ID bearings. I've just taken a cut at 1201 on my DRO. In my calipers, it's reading 1202. That means we're five ten thousandths of an inch away from our final dimension. So hopefully one more skim pass will get this squared away. I'm using this quite pointy geometry tool because that allows me to get in to where this live center is supporting that long work piece. And while I'm making this, I'm reflecting on some of the very first times I ever used a lathe. I didn't have any training, any education. I just got stuck in and started using the first lathe that I bought. And it's cool to reflect on the fact that I went from complete beginner all the way through to actually feeling confident enough to make a part to dimension. And that journey, starting out having no clue how to use a machine to eventually being able to use it, it's kind of similar to what we're doing with this scooter. I've got no idea how to build it, but by goodness we're going to find out how. 12 millimeters. And for my dear American friends, that's 0.4725 inches. I made a small relief in the middle, just like on a bicycle axle. Oh! Maybe I'll just take just take a hair off. It needs to go on a little easier than that. Ah, oh, for goodness sake. Bearing must be out of spec. It still won't go! Yes, at last. That took way longer than you knew. Oh, YouTube, you got the shortened version, that's for sure. So I cut a thread on my axle, and I've now stumbled across one of my, <laughs> one of what will be many problems to come in this build. You remember when I welded together this fork in yesterday's episode, I just put this bit of all thread through. Well, all thread isn't necessarily gonna be held to a very high tolerance, and we had a clean 12 millimeter hole on one side, threaded hole on this side. All thread has a lot of rattle, because it's not gonna be a full 12 millimeters around. However, we just made, admittedly with a little bit of difficulty, a perfectly closer tolerance 12 millimeter bit of round bar for this axle, which you can see with the way we welded this, using this inaccurate or less accurate spacer means the holes weren't perfectly lined up even though that all thread fit. And now I can't get my freshly turned axle to fit. You see what happens? It's off center. So it means we now have to sacrifice this beautifully accurate hole for a sloppy hole. Success! We've got ourselves a beautiful axle, it spins. Next up, we need to weld this pipe into that pipe, and this will be where our stem and then handlebars connect into it, hopefully at the right height. Gotta open it up so it fits our stem. Oh, <laughs> 
Yes! That's the bloody trick! Aye, aye, that's the f***ing juice! So with our front wheel, I'm waiting for a bit of bronze so that we can finish the head tube assembly. While that arrives, we're going to work on the second of two wheels. So part of the challenge is how do we make this wheel strong enough to transmit the forces required to propel this loud little British boy forwards? Well, I bought some 25mm keyed axle stock to start with. The plan's going to be similar to the bearing cups we installed here. However, instead of a bearing cup, we're going to have a flange. And the flange will have holes that allow bolts to go through here. And so it's back to the... Take a guess, Jamie. What machine are we going to be going to? Boring lathe. The boring lathe. Yeah. Well, well, that's what it's for, boring stuff. Technically true. We're going to be doing some boring. <laughs> I'm such an idiot here. I didn't make my keyway and my holes line up, Jamie. This has been a day. There have been some hiccups along the way. This has taken a hell of a lot longer than it should have. As you can see, we have our two hubby type things holding our wheel in place. You can see we have two key slots over here. And right here, I have even more struggle. That is that my design work is awful. How on earth am I going to screw a nut onto that bloody bolt? What silly design work. This barely turns across there. It's not going to be able to tighten it up. So I need to somehow grind into this collar to allow a nut to spin. And here is my very beautiful rear wheel all finished up with plenty of little character marks that let you know it's authentically handmade. So right now I've got some of the things that I bought, like a go-kart sprocket, some go-kart bearings, a bicycle disc brake, and I've got them mounted on this 25 millimeter axle, basically trying to find out what I've got to do next. Now here's the brake component of the disc brake. It won't sit like that, which is not gonna work. So this stuff might need some rejigging. Let's modify this thing to actually fit the disc brake now. Got my disc on, my sprocket on. Next step is we're gonna cut off the axle, make ourselves a groove for another snap ring on this side, and hopefully get the rear end of our scooter all welded together. What? Which way does it turn? Come on, Adam, we haven't got all day. I don't know which way it loosens. So close! Are you bloody kidding me? How have I gone so far wrong? I got my measurements a full half inch off. That's stupid. I'm 
was too short. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Ah, no. <laughs> no. I'm not. I can't deal with this. It's too short. How have I made such a bad mistake on that? Oh boy. I don't know about this project. This is difficult. Big thank you to Raid for sponsoring this episode. See you guys on the next one.